Hello and welcome to this small, I would call it maybe release video of NGRX DAX. Maybe it's the right thing to call it, maybe not. Um, I just thought about uh, since uh, a new release has approached for NGRX DAX with a new API that I want to record a video that does not go very deep into all the functionality of NGRX DAX, but more into uh, what is the mental mindset behind NGRX DAX, where are we coming from, and what made me to actually do uh, the third API change uh, in this library and how everything plays nice together and is still backwards compatible. And why I think uh, that the facet pattern or the facade pattern uh, may is a little bit discussed in the wrong way today uh, when it comes to NGRX DAX and tr I try to give some clue f uh, why I think that we should not talk about facades but about the right abstraction of code uh, that empowers us as developer to deliver uh, our features more frequently and to have a nice interaction with uh, centralized state management API. So if you are not familiar with NGRX DAX itself, so here a short intro. Uh, NGRX DAX is a very thin layer that I put on top on NGRX and it provides you a simplified API that helps you to not write nested uh, reducer functions and reducer branches are uh, it kind of adds com a command feeling that you write commands instead of reducer functions and NGRX DAX just uh, puts every command together for you behind the scenes and generates the reducer function for you and on, on top of that it automatically generates you dispatcher functions that are uh, strictly typed you do not have to take care about creating actions on your own. Everything is bundled in one service that you can use in your Angular application to dispatch actions and to receive values as well. And what you're seeing here is the uh, yeah, previous version of the API. We are not looking at the newest version. I come to this in just a few minutes. Uh, I just want to show you how it's, um, yeah, what's, what it, it's looked like yet and why I actually changed the API again. Uh, because before this decorator API, I also had another uh, yeah, very old API and then I tried to improve it more and more and more. So basically how you have to read it, you have a decorator uh, called Duxify and this is nothing more than uh, yeah, the replacement for uh, injectable. Uh, injectable is called behind the scenes and you have the possibility to add uh, something called initial state and if you're familiar with the Redux you know that uh, each reducer function uh, takes an initial state and this is just you know, a way that you can use a, a decorator to uh, provide the initial data for you. So this is somehow a stolen idea from the component decorator where you also can do all the configuration stuff and then you're fine to go. So this is basically just the initial state. And then you come uh, to the yeah, duck class or yeah, this is a, it's a service class. And the service class has some uh, things, some methods, uh, there is a, a helper method called effect and an effect is really just a helper method that provides you the possibility to set up an action dispatcher that dispatches an action with a type counter load count and, an, and it expects a number payload. So this is the first version that you can use to actually make uh, yeah, a, 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 a Duxify class or a, a duck class uh, to have an action dispatcher. Uh, just let me show you how you can uh, call it. So you inject this class uh, into your component and here you can see this effect dispatcher. Uh, you have the property and now you have the dispatch method on it and 
as I said, it's strictly typed. You, there is no possibility to uh, patch something else. So this is not uh, uh, possible anymore. Normally a compiler error should show up. This might be sometimes uh, StackBlitz editor uh, cannot catch up with the most recent changes. Just let me try it again. Yeah, now you can see the error. So, so, so you can just see Nginx Dux automatically sets up this dispatch method for you and uh, also adds the correct typing. And you achieve this, uh, as you can see, while having this add inject decorator here, where you inject the counter, but then you use a type called duck and duck takes this counter class and uh, this wrapping in this generic type allows me to provide you all the nice uh, type information. And for you then inside of the component, it feels like that you really have just uh, a service again that you can work with. So I quickly run through all the other features and then I want to discuss why I think that it's not that a good idea um, to, to use this approach uh, in the future. Um, as you can see, before I go a little bit below, there is something called select and there's another method called bind selector group. So inside of NGRX Dux, you have the possibility to hook your written NGRX selectors into the, the, the Duck class. And what the Duck does is actually transform it into consumable, com consumable um, observable streams. So you do not have to worry inside of your component which selector you have to import from which directory, from which file. Everything is really bundled uh, into this class and you can directly uh, use it. And, and once again, inside of the component, uh, you can see the usage here. We can access select and then we have current count and you can see it's typed to be an observable number. Here, what's pretty obvious in this counter example that we are uh, seeing here. All right, and so basically what you can do here is combine the read and write side uh, of uh, NGRX in, into one class. And you do not have to yeah, write all the code about injecting the store using pipe and select operator then passing uh, the uh, selector into it. Uh, everything is really done for you here and you do not lose any flexibility since you can just reuse every selector and you can do the normal selector composition uh, as you already know from the samples that you can see on ngx.io and in some of the most recent versions of ngx stacks we are also able to um, support the uh, yeah, property selector so you can pass other uh, arguments to a selector and receive value. So this you can totally use every feature of NGRX and just add a little bit of syntactic sugar for your Angular application using NGRX docs. So last but not least, there is an add action decorator. And you can see here that we have not something like uh, an action class or create action, which was recently introduced in NGRX 8. You have an action decorator that annotates a method and this method is nothing else than just um, a method. And this method is part or becomes part of the reducer function that is automatically composed or uh, generated by NGRX Ducks. And as you can see, this is really just a case reducer here where you can do your normal uh, manipulation, state mutations, and so on and so on. So how does this hook into NGRX? You can see this here. Um, I have a index.ts where I uh, yeah, have a state interface. And here I collect all my reducers in the sample. Um, uh, so I think you should you you will see something like this also in the NGRX example app where I use the combine reducers method and then I use um, other method from NGRX docs called reducer from I pass in the class token and internally reducer from just uh, spins up a counter instance reads all the methods that are annotated with add action 
and uh, combines them to our own reducer function. And then this is basically everything that uh, needs to be done. So you do not have to introduce uh, NGRX DUX module or something like that, because it's really just doing composition and then it adds uh, yeah, the reducers uh, normally to, um, to the NGRX reducer tree or reducer registry, if you like. Um, Last but not least, uh, NGRX DAX also uh, integrates itself into effects. And uh, as you can see, NGRX DAX has an, an own operator to work on types. You can see this um, here that I also inject the counter or the duck counter here into the counter effects. And then I'm just working on the properties of uh, the duck. So as you can see here, this counter that load count, this was initially the property I showed you here was load count, uh, which is this effect dispatcher that I use to trigger an effect. That's why also the wording effect. And here I can use load count and you can see here also the type is inferred automatically and because NGRX DAX was released before NGRX 8, um, I thought about it would be nice to infer the type of this action creator here automatically that you can that you do not have to manually add type annotations to your payload or to your action. So you can see that the payload number here is automatically inferred and you can see that inside of this map function payload is really of type number. And fortunately our NGR, the NGX core team has had the the same idea doing this. So since NGX 8, uh, everything is also completely automatically inferred. So there is no need for uh, this rare type operator uh, anymore. So this is really just a leftover from previous releases and it has been released in NGX or it has been re removed uh, in NGX 9 then. Yeah, so this was the overview about uh, the uh, NGX DAX library and how it is connected to several parts of NGRX. So if you want to learn a little bit more about how you actually spin up a project with NGRX DAX, um, I recommend reading some blog articles. I will uh, link all these articles below in the description uh, because this video is not really about uh, teaching how NGRX DAX can be used, but now I want to dive a little bit deeper into an API discussion that I had with several community members and what I also noticed when I was using the library. So the first thing that I want to say is we will hear the word facade maybe five to 10 or 20 times now from now on. Um, there was some uh, yeah, in the previous month, uh, there were several changes in the community um, you know, changes in, in the mind how to deal with facades in NGX ducks. And now the current opinion, I think, is that facades are not good. And the first thing I want to say is that's totally right. <laughs> So everyone saying that using NGRX with facades is not the good way or is pot potentially not the best way is totally right. Um, the thing is that a lot of people who talking about facades, thinking of a facade that it's really handcrafted uh, work. So maybe I can just show um, a blog article to this. So we can see um, here, for example, a blog article showing this facade. And here you can see how a facade actually looks like. That is, it's just an injectable that hides the implementation detail of a store. And it literally does the same like a duck, right? You have this loaded property and you can use this and that, and then you inject the store. And if you want to dispatch an action, you can spin up a method or yeah, a method and then using this store.dispatch. And what the goal of this facade is really to providing a better 
uh, developer experience inside of a component. And I like the idea of good developer experience. The problem with this approach that I see is that it does not really scale very well. Um, for each action you create, you have to add a member or a method. For each selector you create, you need to uh, add this loaded selector or yeah, the, uh, the new selector to it. So you have to do a lot of maintenance work if you use NGRX facades manually. And if we compare this facade with our NGRX DAX facade, you will see that the structure is somehow the same. So we have selectors. Uh, by the way, you do not really need to uh, do this manually. You can also pass the whole selector just into this uh, bind selector group method and then all new selectors will be applied um, automatically. So you do not have to touch this property actually. Uh, but you can see you have this, these selectors, you have this uh, action dispatcher somehow, and you also have the, the actions here. And now the real difference to a normal facade here is that NGX Dux combines all the, the tasks of writing a reducer function, creating an action, um, binding selectors to uh, the yeah, to the component uh, by uh, transforming it to, into a stream, all these tasks are done and you never have to touch uh, any of those tasks ever again. And that's why um, I would uh, suggest that we maybe should talk not really about, or we should not burn pattern names like facade, the facade pattern, we should more talk about what is really our, our goal and start asking us the right questions like what do we want to achieve and I ask this question uh, myself and I was thinking about okay what I want to achieve is a better developer experience because I heard in large NGX projects that there is a cognitive dissonance, finding all the actions, all the reducers, uh, where are they put, where are they stored, how should the import statement look like. So it was a, simply just a discoverability problem. And this is what NGRX Dux solves, that you have service class again, and then you have, thanks to auto completion, uh, all the stuff that you need, you immediately know what the capabilities are uh, of, oh, once again, the auto completion is gone. So just let me reload the page. Uh, so once more, so you immediately hit uh, the dot on your keyboard and you see what the stack is capable of, which methods you have, which selectors you have. Uh, and so on and so on. So this is one main benefit of it. And it also solves the problem um, of how you structure your uh, actions. And for me, the contract of an action is really that it has a mandatory type and it has a payload property which has any type you want. So it can be of type a user or a product, a number, a boolean, uh, whatever, whatever, but at least it is a payload property. And I like the simple idea of a payload property very, very much because you do not have to think about uh, anything else. So if you put this into real life, you also have, uh, if you want to send a letter, you have an envelope and you put your letter into the envelope. So and an en envelope Every time it receives paper, but it doesn't matter what is written on the paper, but it's, but it's, you put paper into an envelope. So it's a very easy concept. And that's why I also like that an action has a payload property. Why am I saying this? Uh, this is just because now in NGX8, you have to, the possibility to use um, uh, to not use the payload property on an action. You can uh, put whatever properties you like to, uh, to an action. And 
I think uh, it's it's not uh, it's not a mistake or it's not a failure. I just only want to say that I really like the idea of have a simple and clean concept and that I do not have to remember which payload or which property I have to expect on which action. I just need to know, okay, I have definitely a type I may ha and I may have a payload that has uh, some type. So yeah, so these are my uh, thoughts or these were my thoughts. And that's why NGX Dux really sticks with uh, the payload uh, property. And even this is totally concealed uh, if you use NGX Dux because you can see NGX Dux comes with uh, these uh, methods and you only has to uh, pass the payload. Uh, in this case here in line 31, it's a number and this number is just added to, to, to the payload property. So, uh, and this way it makes it very easy. Okay, but now let's come to the problems that I have discovered and we may can just uh, have a look right here into in this uh, counter component. And you can uh, see here that we use this in at inject decorator with the counter token. And uh, this is the first thing that uh, some people uh, do not really like that they now have to use a more complicated way to inject a service into a component. It's completely so sol sol solvable with uh, a snippet or something like that but I have to admit yeah it's true so the, the setup of a NGX DAX service is harder than a normal service or even than a normal manual crafted NGX facade. The next thing is about the typing. I really love the typing of NGRX Ducks and I put a lot of work into it. But there is one crucial thing that I discovered just a few weeks ago. And this is that this duck type here really bleeds into your component. So you need to have a dependency to NGX Ducks to get this service running into your component. And basically this is something that I really do not want to have that my architecture bleeds into a component. I want that the component just knows the contract. Okay, I may have some methods. Maybe I use messaging. Maybe I use uh, streams. But this has nothing to do with uh, the library, library, library that I use under the hood. Maybe I want to exchange some parts or update some parts uh, of it. But my contract messaging and streams, these are the stable points in my architecture. And it is not that bad that we have this duck type here or this generic type. It's really just a type helper, but at least it is really a dependency from the component to my library. And I thought about, okay, maybe this can be improved. Another thing that might have you confused also, when I showed you the duck, if you start with a new library and you see you have to learn so many new words like I have effects, I have bind selector group, I have, oh, let's see here, a decorator with add action or add duxify. These are lots of things to remember and I saw a few uh, teams using this being very confused first. Um, because you ha really have to learn a new concept. And I thought about, okay, how can I help uh, developers um, having it, uh, we are simplifying the onboarding process here. Uh, the first thing that I noticed was that there is an API difference. If I set up an effect, I have this load count property with dispatch and if I have a method decorated with add action, I only have a method without the dispatch method. But actually both lines here, 20 and 31, 
do the same thing because increment also dispatches an action. I repeat that, increment also dispatches an action. And this is totally unclear to a newcomer to this library that a plain method call without a naming uh, that something is dispatched uh, actually dispatches an action. Why did I publish that API? Um, this comes from the uh, history of the Dux pattern. So NGRX Dux, uh, I did not came up with the name on myself. There is an, a refactoring pattern called Dux. And in the Dux pattern, you create method that replaces uh, store.dispatch and the result is a plain method um, that you can see here actually. And I adopted this Dux uh, refactoring pattern and I discovered that uh, the Dux pattern isn't not, uh, is not only helpful for these reducer functions but also for the effect functions. And that's why I came up with two APIs, one for the effects, for the NGX effects, and one for the reducer functions. But basically what we are talking about is actions, right? And that's why I thought about, okay, maybe the concept of having effect and add action, uh, maybe we can collapse this down to have just one API that is uh, much more clearer to uh, developers. Mm. Yeah, and as you can see, this pattern, um, what we have here with a, a function enhancing the class by effect and bind selector group, I think this was quite a good idea since also the NGX team go, goes this way currently with having create action, create reducer, create effect. So, and I call myself this progressive enhancement of classes. So having a method setting some uh, boiler boilerplate code up for you and then you can use uh, the new features. But let's go a little bit further in, uh, in NGX Dux. Uh, what about decorators? I'm a big fan of decorators because uh, it's very clear that if you annotate a method uh, and you can be very descriptive and you can extract all the configuration concerns out of methods. There is one little problem with decorators uh, yet in TypeScript that you cannot really type a decorator combined with an action. So it would be really nice to have more type support um, uh, for it to have a more clear API. And what happened previously, and a, a friend called me and asked me about NGX Dux and how to use it, uh, what a friend of mine started doing is having not only a payload, but having also maybe a user, just uh, typing this code here. So having actually three uh, properties. And there was no arrow throw, thrown, so you can also say a number, maybe then it's clearer. So you, as you can see, there is no error thrown. So the compiler does not inform you, hey, you should only have the state and the payload property here. Uh, another problem is if you change the return type and say, okay, I want to return a number. This also is a problem since you have the state property here and it's a rule in Redux that you return a new state. Uh, but now it's not really reflected by the type system and can cause runtime errors. So because now you just return a number and not the whole state object. So these are things that can lead into a misuse of an API. And actually we have TypeScript that should prevent us from, have, uh, yet from misusing uh, an API and causing a runtime errors. So, and this is the whole explana explanation why the decorator here in this case might not be the best idea because you need a lot of, uh, you lose a lot of type safety um, uh, in general. And that's, this is the reason why uh, the decorator API uh, yeah, was updated, upgraded to use this progressive enhancement of a class that we already see here above. 
where I still think um, it is a good idea to have a decorator on top of the class. So what you do not see here is that this decorator um, internally connects this counter class with the store, being able to dispatching everything and uh, yeah, doing s some, some, more, some more cool stuff. And therefore Duxify instructs the add injectable uh, decorator to do some crazy stuff with the class. And the, all the setup is uh, yeah, behind this uh, decorator and does all the setup for us. And I think this is really a good thing to hide infrastructure uh, or yeah, to uh, provide infrastructure in form of uh, a decorator. And the last but not least thing about the problems, so maybe let's summarize for now, um, confusing wording or lots of new words um, that you have to learn, then a confusing API, sometimes you need to use dispatch, sometimes not, and decorators um, may prevent some better typed APIs. So these are the problems so far. And we also discovered a problem here in the effects. For now, you need to uh, inject the duck class to access the actions. And here NGX is clearly, or vanilla NGX is clearly more flexible because you only need to have to import the actions and then you can just use them right away. Here you really need to you inject the class and then you can access the property. And this does not really scale if you have actions from different services, then it uh, can be that you end up injecting five duck classes into one uh, effect. And this does not really look good and you also uh, mess up with a lot of naming conflicts and uh, so on and so on. So big problem, it doesn't scale uh, with a lot of injects. Um, lots of uh, developers also are asking me if uh, this problem also appear in components. And fortunately, from my experience, I can say it's not a problem in components at all, because a component often is very tight to a certain state slice. And you may, maybe you have one bigger component that composes two state slices, then you have two injects and you end up with two services. What I think is not uh, the, the worst thing, the worst situation to have. And, but where you have multiple uh, action or duck injects, this is really a counter effect because the counter if, or an effect is really the conductor of lots of actions and you can switch contexts or compose contexts with each other. And here it can really come to uh, yeah, a massive action composition in, in, in a complex effect. Uh, so that's why injects, just remember injects does not scale in effects. And the other thing, uh, it's clearly, I said this before, this rare type operator. I uh, introduced this and I really had very good type support, but now we have NGRX 8 having also very good type support and a very reliable type system. And I just wanted that none of the users of the DAX library needs to use a custom operator coming from NGRX DAX and I really wanted to go with the NGRX Teams uh, solution. And that's why I'm very happy to finally present to you uh, the new version of NGRX DAX. And luckily, <laughs> it, this was not planned, that the effect is here also open, that you have a direct comparison. But here you can see that we now have the possibility to use off type that is, that comes from at NGX Ducks. And if you have a more concrete look on the effect class, you will see that he, you won't see any NGX Ducks dependency here in the, in the imports. And this is really one thing that I am now very proud of in NGX Ducks 9, um, that you do not need to 
uh, yeah, depend on an NGRX operator in an effect or in a, in a component. So sh short, long story short, every consumer from your state solution or from a state architecture does ha has no dependency to NGRX or NGRX stacks anymore. It really only communicates with the uh, over the contracts, over the communication contracts, namely the actions, so messaging and uh, streams. And as you can see now in NGX Ducks, there is somehow I managed to uh, provide the actions directly again, how this is done, we will see in just a moment. But now an effect scales normally, like you, you are knowing this from um, from NGRX, you can directly access actions and just use them as you already know it. Okay, so how is this done? Uh, you can see that I also do not use the, the wording duck inside of a file anymore. I now use facade and maybe now you know why I talked so a lot about uh, facades and why I think facades are not the best idea. We just re need to re rethink something um, because in the end, what I previously called a duck, it is really a store facade that you can instrument. And the facade now looks a little bit differently. You can see that uh, the Duxify decorator is gone and has been replaced with uh, the decorator store facade. There is, um, there are only progressive enhancements now here. So you have no decorator inside the, the facade class. Uh, you only use methods that are typed. And you can see also that we have the select again. It's now a little bit shorter. It's not a bind selector group. Now it's just bind selectors, but under the hood, it's still the same. Um, there is also a method pick. Um, this is just for backward compatibility because I used a pick factory to be able to use any uh, selector that I want that is written. And uh, if you just you know, still want to use pick uh, in your facade or in your duck class, what it was called uh, before, um, then you just need to add use pick uh, into your uh, facade and then you, then you are able to use this helper. Um, yeah. And now I really came back to the uh, roots of the duck pattern because normally the duck pattern uses, uses a method called create duck and then you have a first parameter uh, with a type and then you can, for example, use uh, the helper risk dispatch and say, all right, if you dispatch this action, you need to pass a number. This is a replacement of effect. So previously we have here in the conduct, we have this effect and then have this generic type operator here. Uh, this is now gone completely by have this create duck me method and this is the only entry point you need to know to create an action or an action dispatcher. And it can do a little more there. For example, create duck can also take just a method and this is a case reducer. And instead of having uh, the add action decorator, you can now use also create duck, but just yeah, using this uh, inline method here. And you might be familiar with this style because create reduce of NGX ducks also has this arrow functions inside. And what I am able to do now um, is the following thing that we have now better typing. So it's not possible, it should not possible anymore to add more parameters than allowed. So this is now, there is now a constraint. And what I also really like is that it should also blow up. Oh, let's see if this works. Oh, never tried this out. Ah, wrong. So, Okay, so this somehow seems to be working. Oh, 
sorry for the mistyping. But maybe this still has something to do with uh, Stackplitz editor hanging up. So let's try this once again. Yeah, now you also see that we have um, a mismatch and it should say exactly that I now return a number as state, but this is not assignable to counter state. So as you can see, if we have a mistyping here, and now let's try this once more, and I really have no clue how to type. Okay, so this is some somehow not recognized. So this is very interesting. So maybe I will look this up a little bit later. Um, I need to double check if this has something to do with the uh, StackBlitz editor maybe that's not really updating. But you have already seen that uh, we have a type constraint there. So if this object is not uh, yeah, are compatible with counter state, we will receive a TypeScript error, which should also prevent us from producing more and more runtime errors. So the end result is that we have a clear API. We have the read side with pick and select, and we have the write side only using create duck. And this is uh, every time this is the same thing. I also decided to remove the initial state from the facade because it's not really necessary to put the uh, initial state into the facade decorator. We can end up using it like it. you already know it from uh, NGRX that you have just a constant and then you can use uh, the manual approach or you are using NGRX entity or something like that, um, spinning up the initial state. And as you can see here, the producer is now uh, you, uh, yeah, built with a get re reducer helper. Uh, previously, it was called from reducer. Now it's called get reducer. It's uh, quite the same thing. And what you now also can do is you can extract all the actions that are built inside of this class, namely, namely load count, increment, decrement, overwrite. And these actions can be extracted from the class and then you receive this uh, object containing all uh, your actions. And these actions are really NGRX compatible actions. You see that this is an action loaded and this is really a type coming from NGRX. And so we are safe to have the nice type support here and NGX is able to read all the uh, yeah, informations out of the Duxified actions. All right, so what we have solved now, I think is confusing, confusing, yeah, confusing names inside of a Duck class. Uh, I'm now brave enough to use the word facade instead of ducks. <laughs> And yeah, it's now a very clear and straightforward way to have these get helpers to extract certain informations out of the duck class. So as you can see here, it, how to hook it in into NGRX, it's really the same thing. You just have to use this reducer inside of this uh, reducer combined process and you're fine to go. Last but not least, now you can see this. The component really only receives a service and the service provides streams that you can read from and it also uh, yeah, offers you uh, action dispatchers and now all dispatchers really have this dispatch. Uh, method and I think this is a great way to have really one API and the one API acts the same uh, Yeah, really has the same Behavior and the same look every time you want to use it uh, Yeah, uh, by the way, you are still able to use uh, these methods directly, then you really just will receive the object. So if you do something like a decrement, you will, uh, this method will return the actual action with the type and the payload. Okay. 
And this is basically it. Um, these are the changes to, to the DAX library. And hopefully uh, I was able to solve a few problems. And, but this is not everything. So two more informations, as you can see. Our NGRX DAX 9 already works with uh, uh, Angular 9 and it also supports NGRX 9. And uh, if you're already using NGX DAX, no worries, the decorator API does not, uh, is not removed. So you are still able to use the decorator API and to migrate uh, step by step to the new API. Or if you're interested in contributing to NGX DAX, uh, it would also be very nice to have an automatic upgrade path via Angular schematics, where we do some code transformations to transform just the decorator API to the new create DAC uh, method um, uh, API. This would be really great. But basically, you are safe if you update to NGX DAX 9, you uh, will have no breaking change. You are still able to use NGX DAX like you already know it. And this was also a consideration. Uh, I know it's just an open source project. We are not a big team can, which can maintain a lot of different API paths. But uh, I think it's really a good idea to not break uh, anyone uh, in the work and just provide uh, new new things and uh, improved APIs and just encourage uh, teams to update step by step to the new version because we won't be able to support Decorator API for uh, the next three major releases. Uh, hopefully, yeah, unfortunately, this is not possible yet. Um, yeah, but uh, definitely uh, you are able to use Decorator API and just to go on with your current project. Okay, and the last thing I think, no, I have everything covered. All right, then if you manage to watch this video until this point, I'm uh, very happy and uh, thank you very much for your time. And it once again, it really, I hope this video showed a little bit uh, how I think and uh, why I uh, just decided uh, certain points uh, to change the API was heavily driven by some community feedback, uh, confusion. And uh, then I discussed a lot of things also in the GitHub repository. And the thing having two APIs running in parallel was also an idea that we came up with just discussing it in a GitHub issue and just to having it uh, in place uh, for teams that are already using NGX DAX. So then once again, I thank you very much for your time. And uh, if you want to use NGX DAX, you can install it via Yarn or NPM. I will put the link into the description. If you have any hints, any issues or uh, yeah, ideas for the library that improve the library, you are very welcome in our GitHub uh, repository. And we are very happy to speak with you. So then thanks and goodbye.